this little song that I'm singing about, people you know is true. If you black and gotta work for a living now, this is what they will say to you. This is if you was white, be alright. If you was brown, stick around. But as you black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back. Show me the ugly child. And why is she the ugly child? Because she's black. Actually, all my life I've felt ugly because of my dark complexion. It's something that affects me in almost every aspect. Colorism to me is actually the skin that covers our soul. My definition of colorism is a rainbow. It's just a rainbow of people of all different shades and colors. Colorism to me is something that has plagued my community for hundreds of years. Colorism to me, the separation of a certain group of people just simply by skin color. Just like marginalization based on skin color. Colorism to me is just another word for divide. I'm somebody else. I'm white. White. White! Does that answer you? I guess so. Then please, Mama, will you go? And never do this again. And if by accident you should ever pass on the street, please don't recognize me. I won't, Sarah Jane. I promise. The world has a mentality to say, if you're black, get back. If you're white, you're right. And I've been black all my life, so I've been saying no to all of my life because of my darker skin. Patricia Johnson. I'm originally from Rochester, New York. And my racial background is that both my parents are black. My name is uh, Vera Ethelene Bryant Glass, and we're from Nigeria. But we originated uh, in Goldsboro, North Carolina, in the mid Bible country. What do I feel about the brown paper bag test? Wow, I fell there. I surely failed it because I'm darker than a brown paper bag. <laughs> Uh, the brown paper bag test it sounds like the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Growing up, all my friends coming in all shades of color, we just knew that black people did come in all shades of color because the slave master was everywhere. So you don't know what your kid's going to come out looking like or what your heritage is going to where they came from. So I guess that's why I just never thought of it because black people are like a rainbow. How do I feel about celebrities and skin bleaching? Well, that's nothing new. Back in the 60s, all the blacks bought that black and white cream and other versions of it too to bleach their skin. You could have two light-skinned people that would have a dark-skinned child and two dark-skinned people that will have a light-skinned child because that's what slavery did to us. My grandfather, was a slave that was freed when he was 16 years old. It still does have to do with the, with uh, light skin, dark skin, or, or you're this color, you're, you're that color. The light skin versus dark skin, the whole thing, I think, is very divisive. And you know, that stuff could be traced all the way back into slave days. Definitely rooted in slavery and it just further perpetuates what white people have been telling us that, you know, we are not good enough if we're of a certain uh, skin color. You know, there were slave owners, they, they raped African uh, women. They had mixed babies. And those babies went on to be known as uh, the house niggas. And, you know, they, they had their own special place and they were viewed differently based on the, the slaves that were on the field. Going back far as having as a slave master putting the light skin or his children in the house, as they call house niggers, or the black, darker skinned ones, field ones in the plantation working in the fields, and he's out there going into the hen house every night screwing the field and then he puts his children in a house.
the planter and his slaves, were part of an unusual class system. The sharp division of people into two main groups, the owners and the slaves, left a lasting influence on the society of the South. What was that society like? For the plantation owner and his family, it was an aristocratic kind of society. Gentle manners, courtesy, hospitality. Many of the ideas that we still associate with the people of the South came from the days when plantation life was in full flower. If your skin is the only thing that's holding you back, you do what you need to do. Even in the Black and Proud movement, we recognized if you were dark skinned, but some of us based it on the fact that we wanted to move further. We know we had to be a little bit lighter to get where we wanted to go. Today, we really need to go for who we are. Know who you are. There is a saying that says, if you don't know where you came from, how will you know where you're going? And that is sincerely true. Once you know the history of who you are, who you mix with, where you came from, you can bet you feel proud. This country especially, um, there are actual laws still on the books that aren't really um, followed, but they do involve like people of like certain skin tones not living in certain neighborhoods. It's like if you track the genealogy of it, it, it uh, transcends, puts groups of minorities in, um, in less wealthy areas, worse schooling, worse opportunities. It has affected me in finances. I've lost jobs, I've lost income. If my skin color is the only thing that'll make you accept me, oh well. where we're at to educate to let people know exactly how this all started how it was created and how it could end no matter what skin tone you are the darkest or the lightest whatever you are you gotta just love who you are nothing that can stop you from meeting your goals set setting a legacy in life when you know who you are no matter whether you're dark skin or light skin or anything in between if you're black you're black I'm proud of my skin tone. I'm silky milk chocolate. I'm, I'm, I got that perfect skin tone. I'm a beautiful black woman and I love it. I was in a place one night. They are all having fun. They was all buying beer and wine. But they would not sell me none. They said if you was white, you'd be all right. If you was brown, Stick around, but as you black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back.